everyone and welcome to one of Digital Transformations live series episodes. I'm Alice Tufastai, an AI program leader in Valley. Our live interviews have been designed to develop the knowledge of applied data science and advanced analytics in different industries aimed to touch Industry 4.0. These live sessions are held every Friday with the professor of one of the universities industrial managers and experts in the field of Industry 4.0 and digital transformation. Today, we will discuss the application of machine learning in mining. And this is my honor to talk with my guest, Professor Victor Tenoria. Victor received a Bachelor of Science in Mining Engineering from PUCP and a Master of Science degree from University of Alaska. He obtained a PhD at the University of Arizona in Tucson in 2012. His research focuses on decision support systems and smart mining for optimizing productivity. Professor Tenorio has worked on several engineering projects in Peru and Chile. He is currently a professor at the University of Arizona, where he teaches introduction to mining engineering mine examination and valuation, and digital mining. He also participated in the autonomous mining program with uh, Freeport McMoran until December uh, 2008. And he was program chair for the seven International Mining Industry Summit on Business Process Improvement in 2015, and uh, was co-developer of the executive mining program for uh, 2016-2017. From uh, 2021, he's uh, coaching a wildcat moon miners, a team of students uh, participating in several competitions related to moon mining. Welcome, Victor, and thanks for accepting my invitation to be with us today. Thank you very much, Ali, and thanks for the presentation or the introduction. Thank you. So just to, just to start the, the discussions and breaking the ice, uh, what's the story that led you to your current role? What's your background? With you? um, well, it started with my passion for computers, uh, starting from personal computers and, 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 and some uh, code development that I, I did in the 80s. <laughs> and uh, at that time, there was nothing in mind. However, there was a few... Uh, a few mentors that uh, uh, that uh, were developing uh, ideas about uh, computerizing um, the, the mine the mine operations because uh, mm -hmm. you were going to uh, collect better data and uh, eventually make uh, b take better decisions. So I think that was the the seed of, of this. And uh, I would say that since then I started to. Uh, uh, go more into that direction, uh, and uh, uh, that uh, ended up uh, uh, becoming my my not only my my passion but also the the work that I am doing. And years later, when I uh, uh, decided to have a higher education, uh, I found the right people for uh, that had the same ideas, and uh, uh, I'm we are still walking in, in the same in the same path. Awesome. Awesome. So I was so lucky to to meet you but many years ago in in person in Arizona. But I know that you are very active uh, in some practical projects for industry, and you try to stimulate something in university. Um, you know, aimed to teach uh, students better, and you can you know introduce a new technology to the students who are interested to start his career their career in, in the mining industry that's great uh, Victor it, it, always we talk about uh, industry 4.0 or talk about the mining 4.0 can you give us the right definition of this word well actually what, what is the right definition of mining 4.0 um, we can summarize the, the definition of mining 4.0 as the, uh, the, the new type of mining. Some people call it digital mining or smart mining. Uh, all of them are the same. And uh, the name comes from the fourth industrial revolution. 
that would be the origin of all these um, uh, concepts. And for the industrial revolution is the is a, a, a major uh, uh, game changer in, in, in not only in mining, but in the industry in general. We, we can talk about the first industrial revolution as the steam revolution mm -hmm. and the industries that develop after that. The second one is electricity, or even we can go into transistors and, and all the changes mm -hmm. that, that happened at the time. The third one, which was very important and is, is uh, perhaps the marker, uh, of this or the benchmark for what we are doing is the computer revolution, perhaps the personal computer revolution and how the, the, it became more reachable to people. Well, going along with that, uh, the fourth industrial revolution is the utilization of computers, networks, and, and especially the, the utilization of devices, what is called the internet of things uh, that uh, uh, mark the, the, the uh, the difference between the, the third and the fourth and its utilization for maximization or optimization or even for safety purposes. Oh, that, that's great. You already summarized everything from industry one and reached to industry four. Uh, maybe you have yes. some idea about industry five as well, but it's not in the scope of our discussion. <laughs> maybe later we can talk about what yeah. will happen in the future and what's the definition of uh, mining 5.0, for example. So, but <laughs> uh, Victor, a, a main part of uh, mining 4.0 is uh, analytics and advanced analytics, definitely. So. And we know that uh, we need to use, for example, machine learning or artificial intelligence to reach to the better understanding and results. Uh, but what is the importance of applying machine learning and AI-based solution to mining business problems? Uh, what has happened is that uh... I, I like to start from mm -hmm. the artificial intelligence mm -hmm. side. And this concept was very basically mimicking uh, the human brain, the way the neurons work and how uh, some input data is processed and produces some output data. But it's not only that, it's the way that you can learn or we can make, make this uh, 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 algorithms that you 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 create or you assemble, uh, learning things and start with a, a set of data uh, and where they learn how uh, the, the uh, how the process behaves and then predict what is going to happen after that. Uh, so the only way to do this is by learning first and calibrating the 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 uh, weights and other uh, elements of the. Uh, and other parameters of the neural network in this case, or could be something else like support vector machines that are uh, a variation of it. And all of them learn in, in, a, in a methodology that is called nonlinear inference. Means that uh, if I can infer with a, with a straight line or a curved line or a, a square or, or parabolic line is, is more or less uh, a, something straightforward or simple, However, uh, the nonlinear inference requires uh, a segmented mode of approaching the, the results. But in that way, you can uh, uh, pre uh, reproduce a potential result of some uh, uh, activity. And uh, that is the, the essence of artificial intelligence. Machine learning is an evolution of that and is, uh, is, uh, uh, talks about machines that already come with technologies that are going to learn and calibrate themselves because they have incorporated the artificial intelligence uh, features and, and, and based on, on the sensors that they have. And, and this is when the Internet of Things comes because they, you can uh, 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 make these sensors provide the data that you require for, an, for analysis.
for many years, for example, in my organization, Valley, uh, we used machine learning and AI approaches to solve the business problem that we had. But uh, sometimes uh, we are facing some critical challenges. For example, the data challenge is important because to train any AI or machine learning algorithms, you need a huge amount of accurate data. So uh, having access to this type of the data sometimes is difficult in some cases. And uh, another problem is the management trust. You know, we are, we are working in an old industry, the traditional industry, and it would be yeah. difficult to, you know, encourage the mind managers or so who people, the executive managers who can make a final decision uh, to use AI. So we need to go step by step through this way to first making trust and, all, and second, uh, you know, uh, prepare all uh, requirements that we need for AI and machine learning in mining. But uh, Victor, let's do, talk about efficiency now because we are speaking about mining 4.0, we are speaking about the digital transformation. Uh, how does uh, digitalization make mining operations more efficient? Well, we can talk about different aspects, for example, productivity, energy efficiency, safety, and environmental protection. Uh, I think uh, the mining industry or mining operations in particular are a, a perfect uh, scenario for uh, uh, using these technologies uh, more than maybe other industries. And this is because uh, we work with data from the beginning, from prospection, exploration, all the drill, uh, drill holes and the core drilling and the samples and the creation of the models and 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 then the, the operations and the control of uh, uh, different types of equipment or, or a, a number of trucks and shovels that are working and especially the magnitude uh, of tonnage that we're we're handling. In some cases, now the new mines start with 100,000 tons per day, uh, uh, some of them even a million tons per day in, in coal or in, in metallic mining. And uh, and, and this is uh, more or less the magnitude of, of, of quantities that we're working. Mm -hmm. So all of this is data. The topography and the update of this topography also is data. Uh, the, the control of water for, for uh, uh, dealing with the environmental protection, control of water, control of, we can, we can still talk about fumes or dust and, and other elements that uh, also the reagents that we use at the plant. All of this is, is is data that we need to control. And uh, I, I will say at this moment that the most important thing that you can find in uh, the, the controlling of this data is control or reduce or mitigate the variability of, of, the, of the results or, or the values that you have. In, in the good values, I mean, better tones, better quality and, and other things, but also the, the, the the, the bad values, I mean, uh, pollution, contamination, or, or any other sust substances that need to be uh, mitigated for, for the work of it. So in general, we, we try to look after the entire mine as a, 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 as a, a, a place full of numbers that we need to control and do what is, what is required to uh, avoid going away of the ranges and 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 try to in the in the interim uh, uh, maximize our productivity yeah beautiful beautiful so uh, based on my experience um, digitalization or digital transformation in mining can help us to think about some multi-dimensional solution instead of just focusing for example to, to on in, you know, energy efficiency improvement, we can talk about improving productivity as well or improving the safety. So having this type of the uh, multi-aspects or multi-dimensional solution uh, can help us to, to think about, uh, you know, the general optimization through the mine value chain. Because previously we need just, we needed just to focus on one area based on the mathematical uh, optimization methods that we had. But right now, 
AI, machine learning, and other tools that we have access to them can give us this opportunity to think about uh, multidimensional solutions and integrated solutions. So I think uh, it would be a great tools right now in our hand uh, to deliver the digital solutions for the business problems that we have uh, you know, in, in mining. So, but I know that we have different uh, areas in mining that we can use uh, digital tools to, to Im for improvement, okay? But what are the mining industry's most significant areas for using digital solutions? I hmm. I think I, I can I can say that um, the 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 mine itself has several activities in the in the whole production process or the production chain sometimes it's called like that and uh, many times we tend as mining engineers to work only in what we know better like is uh, uh, breaking the rocks and then moving the tons and, and delivering to our next client, which is the plant, the concentrator plant, or uh, in the leash pad now uh, uh, for uh, oxides. And uh, uh, we tend to forget that we are a full production chain. Okay. And, and if uh, when we know better about the, the mining process, we, we have to see it from a different perspective. See, seeing everything in a holistic uh, perspective mm -hmm. and, and see them all as, as one is client of the other and, and the other is producing and delivering to the next client and so on and so forth. So uh, with this, we need to, to work hand in hand or elbow to elbow with the, the concentrator plant metallurgists with the exploration people, with the environmental people, and so on. So all of all of these disciplines are linked, and one needs mm. from the other. In that way, you can uh, create more integral uh, views of this through uh, uh, dashboards, through big screens or several screens. In, in some minds, you can see that all of the disciplines converge into a single huge control room for example to see all all the operations and it's of the ingenuity of the developers that they, they will create uh different means of presenting the data in marquees in dials in and in, in dashboards uh, complete dashboards colors spectra or whatever they, they want to use it for for presenting these variations but all of them together and the the, the final result will be the the uh the uh, the, the entire benefit that we we can obtain from 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 the the whole operation, and I'm not talking about just one operation. If we go back, we go to the uh, headquarters or manager's uh, perspective, they may want to do the same with all the mines at the same time. So if you have five or six mines around the world, you need to do the same and still have uh, uh, the best values and the most the more accurate values possible. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, we, in, in Valley, we started the digital transformation program many years ago, I think 10 years ago. Uh, and we tested different uh, digital solutions in different areas for different operations. For example, for exploration, for uh, drilling, blasting, loading, holding, crashing. So, but we found that, you know, based on the experience that we found, we found that we can we can reach to the better benefit when we focus on logistic projects. Maybe, for example, for maintenance or for holding or for crashing, you can provide a digital solution, and it works very well, definitely, based on the current technology that we are using and the smart uh, sensors, soft sensors, or many many new tools that we have access right now in mind. Uh, but the Maximum benefit of each type of this uh, solution is $2 million, $5 million, $6 million per year. But when we talk about logistics projects, for example, using digital solutions for locomotive and railway, uh, using AI and machine learning for uh, vessel movement tracking for, you know, for uh, mine material transportation, or focusing on AI-based prediction models for marketing or sales, you can think about the billion dollar savings and uh, opportunity. 
So it means that now uh, we need to think widely about the application of digital solutions in, in mining. But uh, let's, let's talk about some examples, uh, Victor. I'm, I'm really interested in having some examples of maybe a couple of examples of how a digital approach, for example, can practically solve the business and operation challenges in mind. Uh, one of the most uh, notorious uh, applications that uh, utilizes the AI and the machine learning approach is automation. And I'm kind of, uh, it's one of, of my favorites, but because uh, mm. I was involved in, in the development of some of these technologies. And they start first with uh, uh, first, uh, well, the first step is teleoperation and then uh, uh, the autonomy. I mean, that they have to work and, and basically move from point A to point B, doing a ret repetitive uh, task. And uh, in, the, in the meantime, uh, uh, have special functions like, for example, collision avoidance or object uh, recognition, or even uh, a LIDAR or other, other means of creating a cloud point of the, the, the path or the, the they, are, they are following. So all these things uh, become uh, a, a very valuable uh, thing. And one of the things that comes from that is that even though the original investment may be high, like for example, I have a $5 million dollar truck and I want it autonomous or oh, it will cost you almost one extra uh, million of overhead. But then you have to see how much extra production you are having because you are again reducing the variability. Uh, the truck will work all the shift and all the day uh, 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 all, always the same. Uh, mean, mean, uh, in the meantime, the, uh, the you uh, you you don't have this, uh, like for example, uh, the fatigue or the uh, other problems that may, may appear that may uh, reduce the, the capability of, of the system to optimize. The trade-off on this is that trucks work so hard that perhaps the maintenance go uh, a little bit uh, faster and, and that would be uh, the only thing. But in general, I would say to, to basically to uh, summarize this is that the increase of production could go up to uh, 10 or 20% of, uh, because you are using from the entire time, you, are, you don't have lunch times, you have breaks and, and that's like two hours uh, uh, or even four hours during the day. So you can make these machines work better and more for you. And the other, uh, finally, the, the other thing is that also, you're not exposing your people to go to uh, into uh, harm's way or or going in in places where are unreachable because they are too far, too remote, too deep, or too hot or too cold. And mm -hmm. instead of that, you have uh, safer operations. Thank you, thank you, Victor. Yeah, I believe that we have many examples right now in different companies. We are we are using the digital solution. And I believe that you and your team in the University of Arizona are pioneer in this area. I can remember many years ago when I visited the uh, University of Arizona, you already developed a lab, a name, same as the you know, um, remote uh, operation monitoring system. And you could monitor the whole truck and some equipment uh, from, from university. So, yeah, in that time, it was amazing. You, because uh, I, I can remember how we are studying at the University of uh, Queensland here in Australia, what is one of the best universities in mining area, but we didn't have access to the technology that you use in, <laughs> in Arizona. That, that, that's <laughs> great. So uh, let, let's talk about, uh, you know, um, I can skip a little personal question. You, I, I know that you have worked in this area for many years, but what are some of the new digital technologies or innovation that you are uh, particularly excited about? Well, there's, there's a few that uh, attract my attention more <laughs> than others. Uh, and uh, I am uh, very, very fond of them. And I also would like to see them working in full action. One of them is, an, uh, a, without mentioning names or brands, <laughs> I, I, I would say that this is a, a, a technology that has 
uh, total coverage of the uh, presence of people and equipment in underground mines uh, in a live mode means that you know exactly where is this person working with what equipment and where is uh, uh, this person going and uh, it, it starts with entering into the mine and in, even the, during the salutation uh, uh, you're, you are checked automatically with RFIDs and other even even with telephones or tablets or whichever so they know exactly where you are and 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 where what are you going to do and you can have a, a full roster of of people a, a list of equipment and and all your plan can be done uh, these systems not only show you in in a 3d fashion where people is and 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 their machines and what tasks they are doing but you can control their production or the productivity levels but more important one layer of of a, 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 a advantage that we have with this is that they have um, uh, safety safety uh, features. So if there is a blocking or a fire, uh, they can have immediately uh, the uh, escape route, and they know exactly wh where to take. If there is a, a, a jamming, a traffic jam in underground mines, it also, also happens. They can see it, and they can be warned uh, uh, for this. So. This is a, a great, a, a great uh, um, uh, innovation in 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 mind uh, tracking and personnel and asset tracking, and especially the safety part. That is one of the the, the ones that uh, is more uh, is more interesting. The others are different sensors and actuators that, mm -hmm. for example, open and close the the gates or the doors for ventilation according to exactly. Is the is the real air conditioning <laughs> that we would like to enjoy in, in in places, especially if they are too hot or so. Other other things that are under development and are done here for mines that have this issue with the uh, uh, thermal gradient is sensors. Sensors that could be wearable. They you can put them in your in your uh, vest or in your clothes and and go into a mine and and and. Uh, detect when it's too hot for a person uh, and when this person has must stop those are a few examples yeah. though, of many that uh, we can find interesting interesting thank you so much for sharing with us you know your your excited uh, technology so uh victor i know that you have worked with uh, free mcmoran for example or other mining companies in the united states in peru in chile and you are definitely familiar with the culture of mining and culture of uh, company management. You know that it's little difficult to encourage them uh, to use the new technology because making trust is important point and but it's difficult. Okay, uh, I'm I'm thinking you know how we can, for example, encourage uh, the mining companies. Uh, to invest in digital transformation. Uh, do you have any idea or what, what benefits have you seen in mining companies encouraging them to invest in digital transformation? Um, there is a, a very positive trend on, on the way these things are, are considered for, for um, a, a investment, a, a investing in, 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 uh, in technology. I had a, a recent reading, uh, and can't, can't tell in this moment the, the sources, but it was it's a very good and I presented in, in, in some other uh, conference about the investment in, in technology that companies are doing. And like two years ago or three years ago, it was like two or 2.5%. This year, and this is very fresh news, uh, it goes uh, up to 5%. Mm -hmm. means that they are doubling their interest in investing. And when I say 5%, it's 5% of their revenues oh. that they are investing in, in, their, in this. Now, this number is not necessarily for mining. It's for many, many mm -hmm. industries that are using automation. And some of them, like they have continuous uh, factories and, uh, and other types of manufacturing. They require that. Or they they may they may need these technologies like for example three D printing now is a must and and then they they need to do these things so this is a, a trend that is very interesting in 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 this in this and the other is that um, a, 
you can start small. It's not that, oh, automation in this mine, which is also 100,000 tons or whatever uh, per day or more. Uh, and oh, this will cost us uh, X million dollars, $10 million or whatever. It's too much money, let's leave it. And, and many times it happened when we were talking and working with technology, when the price of commodities drop, you just put that in second, uh, uh, second degree of importance. But you mm -hmm. can start with small things. You can start with the internet of things and start with small, a small set of sensors for particular things. And I have the, I always uh, keep the example of, of a friend of mine who always said uh, he was working on an underground mine many, many years ago. And he was seeing that the pumps, the pumps for the watering, any, any body of water, uh, they were so, so rudimentary that when they start to running on empty, they simply burn. Or if they go to, uh, a, they are over flooded, they also uh, choke and, and burn. So mm -hmm. instead of that, you can have a, the same model, but they have a chip that senses when you have water or not. And that's your starting, the beginning of automation or, or technology for a simple thing. But then comes the other uh, things that you can have, simple sensors, sensors in the scale, sensors in the doors, uh, and other the times of detectors, and you start doing things. The important thing is that these sensors need to be developed or made for the internet, and that your internet system can reach these uh, remote uh, uh, places in your mind mm -hmm. and bring back all this data. And someone in in a in a in a control room or something can develop some analytics to take advantage of that. So you you may already have the the, the internet network and you need uh, repeaters of some sort and then the internet devices that will bring this data into your internet and someone who smartly creates the displays or, or, or the analytics required for that. Talk about it or talk about the history of digital transformation in mining. And you explain for us uh, what is happening right now. You mentioned some examples. But we know that we are used, we are, you know, living and working in the uh, in the era of uh, weak AI. But in the close future, we will move to, for example, general AI and strong AI, and definitely we will have access to more accurate sensors, and uh, we can make some decision making uh, system based on artificial intelligence, etc. Uh, what, what are uh, you most excited about the future of digital transformation or digitalization in mining? I think we will see more of these technologies applied into mm -hmm. uh, a common or normal operations. Uh, th that's the first thing. So uh, we have now autonomous trucks and perhaps in the future, we may have autonomous excavators or, or other types of equipment for doing that. We already have autonomous uh, drill rigs. So it means that I can, I can leave an equipment and do uh, and drill on the entire bank for the next uh, million tons of, of the yeah. month. And that's a very good thing and it's becoming more and more accurate. Uh, but also uh, there's other, other aspects uh, to cover. For me, some of the most exciting and, and the first that come to my mind is uh, the visualization of the ore bodies. And I've seen a few mm -hmm. examples with using virtual, virtual reality basically, and you, Kind of touch the, <laughs> kind of touch the, the the ore body and say, oh, yeah. here it is, uh, the richest part, and so, and that's one. The second one is um, uh, 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 the uh, 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 well, one one of them is blockchain that is associated with mm -hmm. the entire mining process, and mm -hmm. I'm talking not only mine to mill, but it could go more than uh, mine to port. Or even the biggest one that uh, 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 Dr. Fonton used to to mention in his uh, in her lectures, and is um, a mind to market. So oh. we kind of control the entire thing, or or adjust mind value chain. The, 
<laughs> correct, 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 correct. <laughs> that is a good thing. That's one of the things that I, I, I like more. The others are new technologies that are very valuable. For example, I like augmented reality. That's very good for training and for fixing things, in, especially underground. If I have a, a, a mechanic shop underground, I can, I can see with my uh, uh, goggles or any other way, or sometimes uh, screens in a tablet, the, the piece or the spare part that I need to fix, or the, sorry, the piece, the piece that I need to fix and, and, and fix it or replace it or order it directly there, and, and it will come uh, soon. So these are other, other things that will be good. The others are um, the, seeing the entire the mine as an entire manufacturing process is a thing that I was thinking for a long time. And everything should give you an index or indicator of the, the, if the entire, whether the entire uh, mining process is going well or where do you want to fix things. Those are a few examples of, of things that may, may be coming soon. Perfect, perfect. So Victor, we talked about some benefits of digital uh, transformation or using digital solution, AI, or something like that, a new technology in mind. But as you know, each coin has two sides, OK? So <laughs> as the last question, I want to ask you about some challenges and limitations that we have. What, what challenges are mining companies facing using digital solutions? I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's an unfinished business that uh, uh, needs still to be uh, ironed out and, and, and uh, understood completely. Uh, there's still a reluctancy, and this is kind of a natural, a natural uh, uh, feeling on, on people saying that we're kind of working against robots or, or I mean, facing, uh, uh, I say robots, but it's not like that, but it's a, a huge autonomous truck mm -hmm. is a, a robot on, on tires. But uh, uh, yes, some of these things may, there's always the fear that we, you may be losing jobs or that uh, is a, a robot against a persons or, or other things. Those still exist. Uh, the other is that some of these solutions are uh, long-term. Mm -hmm. And if I say, oh, I want my mind and my plant all automated and all uh, autonomous or smart, smart mind, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen in several years. And it also requires some investment that it has to be adjusted according to the market, the commodity prices and other things. Uh, sometimes also is the quick obsolescence. Oh, I have all these, my sensors. Yeah, but that's, that's version 2.0. X and now we are in 4.X and you have to uh, have to uh, 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 go back again and, and buy them, buy, buy more and more. This is, this is not talking with this one and the other. And the other is the, the diversity of technologies. And, and because of that, it may take a while to make them all compatible or, or talking to each other. So we, you may have several uh, uh, solutions for things and still take some time to, to make them all together. Some of them are working, like for example, have one type of computer that has uh, a space for several different technologies. So you may have, or either, a, I don't know if you can have everything in a common screen, but perhaps you'd still have several screens. That was at the beginning with, with uh, the technologies of uh, fleet management systems that you have this brand and this brand and this brand, all of them in your truck. And so you mm -hmm. have to see, you <laughs> have to see several sources of, of, of data. Uh, so you have to be more tactic and create simplified um, uh, screens with just a few colors and a few symbols to simplify things and, and go, uh, go beyond that. The others could be perhaps other, other means uh, of visualization like head up, heads up displays or, or, or some other things. And others that you don't not even see is like a new car. The new car is telling you, oh, you have this in the tire and you just see the tire when it happens or the engine needs oil and you see the, 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 the oil uh, figure only when it happens, not all the time. So that's a simplification to the max. Uh, so we have to see this, some of these things already incorporated into that and, and, and make them easier. Otherwise, uh, there will still be a, a time to, uh, uh, there's a few questions here, but, uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, other, uh, there will be, 
a few times for uh, uh, um, to uh, re rethink the ideas that you have to uh, um, uh, you have to uh, kind of do do them again or request them again because of obsolescence or because of the nature change of nature of what you're doing or perhaps something better has come a better version of this and that and finally the cloud the cloud technology is a great thing that is helping solve many things because if you have sufficient space sufficient virtual machines working in your environment and sufficient uh, storage space and so on you can have the big data you can have your data lakes that are very valuable for in, in one way are valuable because you have everything there, but on the other hand, you have to be skillful to extract the best of it and, and do it. So it's a continuous uh, learning and a continuous process that is happening. Perfect. So uh, I really appreciate, I really appreciate Victor for your time that you spend with us. You have two questions and both yes. of them are about the autonomous fleet. The first one uh, is, I think Timothy asked about the, are the truck loading automated as well? So uh, I think he, he asked about the, the fully automated loading system or something like that. Uh, could you please answer this question? Yes. Uh, I haven't seen uh, uh, full developments of, of uh, the, auto the autonomous loading. And this is mostly because we are thinking on, on the equipment as it was. So we have a truck, and now we are seeing variations of this truck even without a, a driver's seat, which is the first uh, first uh, step. But the, with the shovels or the loaders, we don't see that yet. Mm -hmm. I have seen some equipment, some equipment uh, developed in Germany, but it's still in experimental or prototype that has its own auto loading system. It's a sort of a I'll call it a rack of some sort with some uh, uh, buckets that go in, in, at the back of the truck and they go and collect the data from the stockpile, the, sorry, collect the rocks from the stockpile, which is also data, but, uh, and then put it on the, on the, um, on the truck bed autonom automatically, uh, if not autonomously. Uh, so this is an, uh, a mechanization of some of, uh, a manual process of, or mechanical process of, of loading a truck. But it's very difficult yet to replace a very skillful uh, shovel operator. These guys not only do, yes, they do repetitive things, but at the same time, they think. And when they dig and have some resistance, they do it in a different way or so. That's a thing that it cannot be replaced by, by a machine yet. And also uh, the, the interaction between the, the shovel operator and the person and the, and the driver, the truck driver, uh, is something that is being lost because of the <laughs> and the, of the uh, uh, autonomous technologies, and it's like working, uh, uh, let's say, uh, working with Sleepy Hollow. So you don't you don't you don't see the the head right. or the face of of the of the truck driver, and sometimes there's a reluctancy that you need to to address. So these things haven't been solved uh, at all. So I, I unless there is a continuous thing that it may go, for example, into coal mining, perhaps, and you have continuous miners that now open or do the stripping uh, without without human assistance. And you may have a machine that I have seen uh, also in, in, in coal, which is capable of cutting, 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 and loading to uh, a neighboring uh, truck of some sort going together in convoy. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's for a very specific um, type of mining and we have to see more of that in other uh, yeah. um, with other commodities thank thanks victor and i we received a very uh, good question from john it's a question uh -huh. in all conferences that i i attended is the con is a is a quest key question because you know the mining companies already invested uh, for the non autonomous fleet you know that one truck, maybe the cost of one truck is between three to five million dollars. It's not easy to change everything if you are looking for the autonomous fleet. It would be very mm -hmm. difficult and it's a huge investment. So the question that you received from John is about upgrading 
is there any mm -hmm. chance to upgrade the non-autonomy split to the autonomy split or we need to start from a scratch and make a, a new fleet well uh Actually, what happens is that the first move to go into autonomous is using your existing fleet. And that's kind of a, a, a sales pitch when they say, hey, you have, uh, let's say, 30 trucks here, and now uh, you want them all autonomous? OK, I'll, I'll give you a price. OK, the product has been developed somewhere else, and I can give you half million, uh, for half million dollars each, each uh, unit, you can have the technology. Uh, like a piggy, piggyback on, on your on your truck, uh, plus the infrastructure, uh, a few tweaks on your infrastructure, and you you are you are autonomous already. But you have to do also some change management and educate the the people, uh, uh, relocate the 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 workers that were actually driving the truck, and they have to do other things. Perhaps it would be the supervisors, operators, or or manage the dashboards, or do something different. It could be kind of a scaling up to something uh, a, a better type of job mm -hmm. uh, so that is the the, the first part uh, the, and it's better than than trying to replace them all with new new equipment sometimes you cannot do that so easily now if you are buying from from zero uh, the new the new trucks in several brands are coming already autonomous and without the driver the uh, driverless or without even a steering wheel and some of them look very, very strange, but at the same time, very practical. And perhaps that will change the mind of the people who thinks that every driver's seat is a, is, a, is a job opportunity. Not anymore. I mean, there will be other things. And also, just to round this idea, is that we're going to further, uh, farther and, and uh, remote, more remote places and deeper places and harsh under harsh conditions. And talking about the moon, uh, we will be teleoperating all the equipment and doing the mining from a safe position, perhaps uh, the gateway or or a space station or the 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 bright side of the moon instead of going to the South Pole, which would be uh, much more difficult. So we need those machines and also underwater. If we go uh, mining underwater, nobody can go and fix the thing at 1000 meters or deep or so, so it's, it's impossible. So we need to make them more actually autonomous, it's even self repairing. That's some of the things that we have seen in in, uh, in uh, uh, Mars, in one of the rovers that uh, was got, got stuck in, 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 uh, in a rock and came the stand, sandstorm and covered the, the solar panels and didn't work anymore. The next generation of rovers came with an autonomous function of these launch themselves from from the uh, from the rock and and being able to continue their work so some of these things can be done uh, like we're happening it's happening with some cars now that they can park by themselves they can brake on time in front of a person and a few other things that are 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 a very good uh, development for for the modern times awesome awesome thank you so much victor you did a great job and it was one of the best <laughs> interview that I had. I, I really appreciate you are in the end of you are at the end of the interview. And once again, I need to take this opportunity to thank yeah, you know, uh, you to join us in this episode and also all the participants in, in the live session. Uh, the recorded version of this program will be available on our YouTube channel and other virtual pages on different social platforms. Thanks to all of you. I hope you have benefited from discussed topics and uh, hope to see you again at the next event. Thank you so much, guys, and have a lovely weekend. Ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ali. And, and good, good, uh, also goodbye to all, the, all the, uh, the audience, the live audience, and the future audience in, in, when, when it's been posted. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.